New post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Patsy, this case has been solved. How, Nick? By a talking typewriter. What? Did you say a talking typewriter? Yes, Patsy, I did. What's more, this typewriter talked about murder. Ladies, when you're pressed for time these busy days before New Year's, simply do this. Use new post-war Old Dutch cleanser made with activated seismatite in all your cleaning. Notice how amazingly fast new post-war Old Dutch cuts grease. Wonder at its new miracle-like speed as activated seismatite cleans away dirt and stains in hard or soft water. Thrill to a new, almost effortless ease in cleaning with new post-war Old Dutch. Thanks to activated seismatite, it cleans, polishes with a smooth, gliding action that means less work, less rubbing. So tomorrow morning, get two packages of new post-war Old Dutch cleanser made with activated seismatite. See for yourself if it doesn't clean faster and easier than any cleanser you've ever used. Now for the case of the missing street. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter... Brought to you by a new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. A pretty girl named Jean White rushes up the rickety stairs of an ancient office building in the older part of town. She pushes open the door marked Wallace White Contractor and enters. Wally! Wally, I'm here! Oh, come in, sis, come in. Here, take a look at this. Take a look at what? My gosh, when you phone me to rush over, it sounds as if you'd finally got a contract. I have, Jean. I have. I'm sure of it. Oh, Wally, after all these months, I can't believe it. Oh, so you didn't think Wallace White Private First Class could turn into Wallace White Contractor, eh? Well, here's my first job, sis. Oh, that's great. The Cosmopolis Company's building a 10-story garage down on the northwest corner of 9th Avenue and 9th Street. Here, here's the architect's set of blueprints. But how did you get them? Well, they asked me to submit a bid, so I sent for them and... I submitted a bid that's got to be the lowest. I can't lose. Oh, Wally, that's wonderful. I... Hey, wait a minute. Since when are they tearing down the movie house? What movie house? The one on the northwest corner of 9th Avenue and 9th Street. Oh, you're crazy. There isn't a movie house there. That's an empty lot. Oh, no, it isn't. Remember, I lived in Greenwich Village when I first came to town, when I roomed with Patsy Bowen. The girl who works for Nick Carter? Yeah, that's right. And there's a movie house right where this garage is supposed to go up. I know that. Now, wait a minute. I know the village, too. It's a vacant lot. It is not. The vacant lot is at 10th Street. The movie house is at 10th Street. All right, wise guy. Come on down to the village and I'll prove you're wrong. <laughs> Well, this is 9th Avenue and 10th Street. And there's the movie house on the corner, just as I said. Golly, I could have sworn. Mm. Wait a minute, Wally. We're both right. There's the vacant lot across the street, also at 9th Avenue and 10th. Golly, the village is so twisted and mixed up, you can't ever remember anything hey, about... Jean, hold it. What's the matter? There's something fishy here. Fishy? Yeah. There isn't any intersection of 9th Avenue and 9th Street. What? Well, take a look for yourself. The avenue runs into the village square and ends. What in 9th Street is below the square? It doesn't even come close to the avenue. But the blueprint says... Yeah. It says that a garage is going to be built on imaginary land. But there, there just isn't any such street corner. I don't understand, Wally. Is this some kind of a gag or something? Well, if it is, I don't like it. I paid a $50 deposit to the Cosmopolis Company on these blueprints. Do you think something is crooked, Wally? It sure looks that way. But, Wally... Hey, Jean... You... Do you think Patsy Bowen could get us in to see Nick Carter? Even if it's a case involving only $50. Gee, I don't know. We could try. Okay, then. Let's try. We got to get help from somebody. In the first place, Mr. White, there's no such thing as a case too small for me to investigate. Understand that. But I can't pay you, Mr. Carter. You see, Wally hasn't earned much money since he's been out of the Army. He's trying to get started in the contracting business. Miss White, I don't charge folks. I want to help if they can't afford to pay. Oh, Mr. Carter, you're... 
You're... Excuse me, but I've got to do this. Hey! Mm. What's the idea of kissing my boss? There. <laughs> I miss what? I just had to show you my gratitude. Well, we'll enter that on a new file card marked Wallace... Fee, one kiss, paid in advance. <laughs> and that's a fee it'll be a pleasure to earn. That is what I call an ambiguous crack. All right, then. Suppose we skip it. You know, White, if the Cosmopolis Company's in the racket I think it is, it'll be a pleasure to smash it. What racket do you think that is, Mr. Connor? Well, I figure they've sent out blueprints to contractors all over this part of the country. And those blueprints are for buildings no one ever intends to build. But I paid a $50 deposit for those plans. And the crooks that you paid your money to have no intention of returning it. Why, those dirty... They don't care what you do with the blueprints. Cost them only a few cents. You multiply $50 by a couple of hundred gullible contractors and you have quite a racket. A racket which is repeated in city after city. Well, Nick, what are you going to do about it? First thing, Patsy, is that we're going down to the mailing address of the Cosmopolis Company. They're legitimate? Okay. They're not. Yes, then I'm going to earn that kiss. Oh, good afternoon. Can How I do you help do? you, please? Uh, I'm Doris Foster. Well, I'm Nick Carter. This is my secretary, Patsy Bowen. Nick Carter, the detective? That's right. Tell me, Miss Foster, what's your connection with the Cosmopolis Company? Well, none, really. Miss Harris, my boss, rents out this office as a mailing address. She has several clients, and the Cosmopolis Company is one of them. Why? Is there any mail for them now? Well, yes, yes, there is. Let me see it, please. Well, really, Mr. Carter, I, I can't Oh, I'm not you... going to open the mail. I just want to look at it. May I see it, please? But why? Because there's a chance that the Cosmopolis Company may be running a racket. I want to check. You... You mean they're doing something crooked? Uh, that's the idea. Oh, my gosh, this is awful. I mean, uh, here, here's the mail. Thanks. I'll turn off that light, will you, Patsy? Uh-huh. Like this? Yes, that's fine. Thanks. Hmm. Eleven letters here. With a strong light behind them, it looks as though each one contains a check or money order. I guess that's all the proof we need, Patsy. Well, how is that proof, Nick? Wally White isn't the only contractor in the world. True enough, but a legitimate firm wouldn't be requesting construction bids from so many different contractors. This is a racket, all right. Oh. And you're right in the middle, Miss Foster. Oh, now, listen, Mr. Carter, I've only worked here for a few weeks. I Who don't know anything... Who picks up the mail for Cosmopolis? A, a man named Nixon. You know anything about this Nixon? His address? How to get in touch with him? No, but he, he usually comes in every afternoon. What time? Well, any time. All right. We won't trouble you anymore, Miss Foster. But we'll certainly trouble that Mr. Nixon when he comes in. Oh, uh, Miss Foster, when Nixon comes in, give him this mail. But be careful not to say anything about me. Understand? Oh, yes, Mr. Carter. All right. Come on, Patsy. Huh. Looks as if I'm not going to earn that kiss after all. Gene White will have to give it to Uncle Sam. <laughs> Step around the corner of the hall, Patsy. What was that crack about Uncle Sam, Nick? This is a federal case. Illegal use of the mail? I've got to notify the FBI. This isn't for us. Oh. But I'm not taking any chances on this Nixon in the meantime. Run over here. Why? I want to look in this broom closet. But what for? Tell you in a minute. Oh. Don't know. Nick, what's all the mystery? See that ventilator up there? Yes, but... There's also a ventilator in the office where Miss Foster is. Well, I didn't notice it. Well, I did. And we should be able to hear anything that's said in there from right here. But I can't hear anything. Naturally. Miss Foster's in there alone. She's not talking to anybody. Well, what do you intend to do? Just stand here until somebody comes in and starts to talk? No, I'm leaving you here. Then I'm sending Scubby over with a portable wire recorder. You two should be able to get that grill off and hold the microphone right up against the grill on the other wall. Well, gee, it's pretty high up, Nick. Scubby will give you a boost. Well, sure, I but... want you to try to record everything that's said in that office. Well, we'll do our darndest, Nick, but... What's the idea? That foster girl looked flustered. She was. I'm sure she won't be able to keep her mouth shut. When she sees Nixon, she may be provoked into saying something valuable. And when Nixon leaves, Scubby tails him, uh, eh? Uh, you're a smart girl, Patsy. When Scubby leaves, you report back to the office. We'll turn over everything we got in this case to the government man. <laughs> What's the joke? <laughs> well, I just can't wait to see you turn over to an FBI man that kiss Gene gave you. <laughs> Doris. 
How's the office going? Oh, gosh, Miss Harris, I'm awful glad you came in. Something terrible's just happened. What's the matter, Doris? I'm afraid we're mixed up in some kind of racket, Miss Harris. Nick Carter was just here. Nick Carter? What did he want? He was doing some investigating for a man named Wally White. Mr. Carter said those Cosmopolis people are some kind of crooks. Oh, is that so? And I think Mr. Carter's going to wait until Mr. Nixon calls for his mail and then do something to it. Now, take it easy, Doris. If that Nixon is a crook, I'll get rid of him fast enough. Oh, gosh, Miss Harris, it's got me so upset, I Look, can't... Doris, why don't you take the rest of the day off? I'll take care of things here at the office. Oh, gee, thanks, Miss Harris. Honestly, I'm so shaky, I couldn't type anymore today. Don't worry, I'll finish up for you. Gosh, you're swell. It's a pleasure working for you, even if I have only been here a few weeks. Oh, Mr. Nixon. Hiya, Doris. My boss has something to tell you, Mr. Nixon. Goodbye. Well, what's the matter with her? Your mail is on the desk, Mr. Nixon. What? Oh, yeah. Thanks. I'll trouble you to take your mail out of here. And take yourself, too. What are you talking about? Never mind what I'm talking about. Just understand that I'm severing relations with your company as of today. I don't want anything more to do with you, Mr. Nixon, or the Cosmopolis Company. Okay. Okay. I don't know why you're sore at me all of a sudden, but it's okay with me. You ain't the only public steno in this city. Quite right, Mr. Nixon. Goodbye. Nick? Nick, you're back yet? All right here, Patsy. Oh. Got back to the office a few minutes ago. Been talking with the Justice Department. Do they know about Nixon? They're hot on his trail. Acted in after him for over a year. Oh? They tell me he always operates with the same girl. They're an old team. Doris Foster. The girl in the office? Yes. What makes you so sure? Did she tell Nixon anything? Listen, Nick. Doris Foster pretended to be upset by your visit. She went home for the day and left the office to her boss, a, a woman named Fran Harris. Ah. Then Nixon came in for his mail, and Fran Harris didn't say a thing to him, just told him to get out. That's so. I'll bet Doris Foster pulled that act just to get a chance to warn him. Maybe. Did Scobby tail Nixon when he left? Uh-huh. He went right out after him. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't thankful for that. Why? Well, can't you imagine me cooped up in a dark closet with Scubby? He kept asking me to marry him every two minutes. <laughs> you didn't say yes, did you? Of course not. Well, what about this Fran Harris? Well, she kept her mouth shut and just gave Nixon the freeze. Told him to take his mail and never come back. She did, huh? Uh-huh. I've got the recording here, but it won't do any good. Nixon didn't say anything incriminating. And Scubby's our only lead. Hope he can hold on to Nixon. Oh, he'll report back as soon as he gets the chance. Oh, wait a minute. Nick Carter speaking. Mr. Carter, this is Gene White. Oh, yes, Gene. You've got to come up to my brother's office right away. What's the matter? He's been shot. I think he's dead. Murdered. Nick and Patsy leave the officer to run, jump into Nick's convertible, and drive swiftly toward Wallace White's office. We'll see what happens next in just a moment. Ladies, with 1948 just a few days away, here's a New Year's resolution that's easy to make, easy to keep. It's a resolution to make all your cleaning faster, easier next year with the wonderful help of new post-war Old Dutch cleanser made with activated seismotite. The very first time you try new post-war Old Dutch, you'll be amazed at its new miracle-like speed as activated seismotite cleans away both dirt and stains. And you'll thrill to the new, almost effortless ease activated seismotite gives new post-war Old Dutch. It cleans, polishes with a new gliding action that means less work, less rubbing for you. So for faster, easier cleaning in 1948, get new post-war Old Dutch cleanser made with activated seismotite tomorrow. It's at your dealers now in the same familiar package. Now back to the case of the missing street. Today's adventure with Nick Carter brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. In Wallace White's office, Nick examines the body on the floor while Jean pours out her story. We were just sitting here, Mr. Carter, talking about that missing street and wondering whether you'd get Wally... Oh, easy, Jean. Then 
All of a sudden, there was a shot through the glass panel in the door, and Wooly just slumped out of his chair. I called you right away. It's a good thing you did, Jean. Wally's badly hurt, but he isn't dead. Oh, thank heaven. Bullet through the lung. Missed his heart by a fraction of an inch, I think. Patsy, get on the phone and get an ambulance here, fast. Right, Nick. I... I can't understand it, Mr. Carter. Neither can I, Jean. This attempted murder doesn't make sense. True enough, Wally made the move that uncovered Nixon's blueprint racket. It's true that Nixon can get about seven years in the federal penitentiary if he's caught, but that doesn't add up to murder. It just doesn't make sense. The ambulance is coming, Nick. Oh, good. What in the blaze has happened to Scubby? He was on Nixon's tail. How'd he let him shoot Wally? Well, maybe he just waited downstairs when Nixon came up here. Oh, he couldn't be that stupid. You explained to him about the case, didn't you? Well, of course I did, Nick. And he knew that this was Wally's address. Of course, he'd follow Nixon up the stairs to see what he was after. Well, that's right. Well, uh, we'll hold on here until the ambulance takes over. And we'll hustle back to the office and see whether we can find Scubby. I want to hear what he's got to say. Oh, wait a minute, Nick. You said this was a federal case. It isn't our business. The mail fraud part isn't, and we'll bow out on that. But attempted murder is something else, Patsy. That's always my business. <laughs> Hi, folks. Scubby, what the deuce are you doing here in the office? Where's Nixon? Gee, Nick, I'm sorry. He got away from me. Got away from you? Yeah, I lost him. And let him go up to Wally White's office and pump a bullet into him. What? Scubby, I hate you. Don't you ever propose to me again. All right, now, easy, Patsy. <sighs> what happened, Scubby? Well, I tailed Nixon out of the building. I swear he never saw me. Then he got into a cab, and I followed the cab all the way up to the city line. But when we got there, Nixon wasn't in it. Huh. <laughs> the old Dodge, huh? Went in one door of the cab and right on out the other. Must have seen you, Scubby. Oh, how could he? I wasn't tailing him for more than a minute. Maybe he's smarter than we think. Oh, well, gee, Nick, I'll... All right, all right. We've lost our lead with Nixon. Let's find another. Patsy, let me hear that wire recording. Huh? Well, there isn't anything on it. All right, let's hear it anyway. Okay. Here it goes. Oh, Mr. Nixon. Hi, Doris. My boss has something to tell you, Mr. Nixon. Goodbye. Well, what's the matter with her? Your mail is on the desk, Mr. Nixon. What? Oh, yeah. Thanks. I'll trouble you to take your mail out of here. And take yourself, too. What are you talking about? I don't mind what I'm talking about. Just understand that I'm severing relations with your company as of today. I don't want anything more to do with me. All the cosmos. Okay, okay. I don't know why you're sore at me all of a sudden, but it's okay with me. You ain't the only public steno in this city. Quite right, Miss Nixon. Goodbye. Well, how about that? See? You're wrong, Nick. We didn't learn a thing. I repeat, how about that? Well, did we? What time is it, Patsy? Uh, 5.10. Just time enough to go down and have another interview with Fran Harris. That girl didn't talk, but maybe she can help us find Nixon another way. I hope we're in time, Nick. I think we are. Well, what now, Nick? Scubby, you're going upstairs. Wait in the corridor outside Fran Harris's office. She leaves the office, stay with her. Check. We'll wait here and pick you up when you come out. I'll get going. You bet. And this time I don't get fooled. Patsy, let's go in that drugstore there. We need a phone. A phone? Right. I'm going to interview Miss Harris on the telephone. And when I finish, wild horses won't be able to keep her in that office one minute longer. <laughs> All right, come on in the booth, Patsy. It'll be pretty crowded. Oh, I don't mind. Okay, come on. Huh? Nick, what are you going to say to Fran Harris when you get her on the phone? First of all, I'm going to try to sound like Nixon. Yeah, but what are you going to say? Anything that comes into my head, just as long as it doesn't make sense. But, Nick... All right, now, Patsy, muffle the phone with your handkerchief so I can have my other hand free. Sure, but I don't get it. All right, now, quiet, quiet. I'll have her in a second. Okay. Hello. Oh, hello, Miss Harris. Yes, who's this? This is the Cranniston Franisetto Company calling the time of day. Is this the Curb, Mr. Mixon? What's the 
What's that? Hey, why the double talk? Yeah, quiet, Patsy. I don't think you do, do you, Miss Harris? Well, please understand the way it means released. I'm going to say it again the twice time when you went inside the office, you did. You didn't get that? And he did. I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, I wouldn't if I were the type that you. It's perfectly ridiculous. Isn't the time I went in there? We should at least because listening is understanding, which is a sensible way, isn't it? You have the wrong number. Goodbye. Ah, she hung up. Me. What were you tapping your ring against the phone for all the time you were talking? That was part of the interview. Come on. Brian Harris will be shooting out of her office any minute. And we've got to be in the car ready to follow her. <laughs> She's turning down 4th Street, Nick. Right. We'll stay with her. I wish I knew what you said to her on the phone. She came scooting out of her office. I gave her some double talk. Double talk? With Nixon's voice, or a reasonable facsimile. And while he talked, Nick also tapped on the phone with his ring. Oh, I wish I could figure out your tricks, Nick. Yeah. You could. Crooks could, too. That wouldn't be so good. Uh, heads up now. Brand just ducked into that loft building. Are we going in after her? We are. We've got to move fast or we'll lose her. She's still running up the stairs ahead of us. Probably headed for the top floor. Well, what's she got to do with Nixon and Doris Foster? You'll find out. Is she sore because they were using her office for their racket? All right, let's keep extra quiet, please. Tap four coming up. You think Nixon's inside that loft? I hope so. But what do we do? A simple thing. Just knock on the door and go in. After we're inside, we'll take him. Well, suppose he puts up a fight. Don't forget what he did to Wally White. I'm not forgetting Wally White. But, Nick, you can't. All right, all right, now. Stop here. Okay. Nixon? Open up. Open up, Nixon. I want to talk to you. Watch out! Get down, quick! Get down! I was wrong. There's going to be a fight. And maybe another murder. Nick, Patsy, and Scubby crouch on the floor a shot splinter the plant door. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Friends, we won't be with you again until next week, so we take this opportunity to wish you the very best of everything for the new year. 1947 has seen America assume a role of world leadership. The poor and oppressed peoples in many lands look to us in the years ahead for strength and guidance. So let us set the example by welcoming the coming year with faith and optimism, confident that we can lead the world on the paths of peace and righteousness. The makers of new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser and the entire cast of Nick Carter all join me in wishing you a very happy, very prosperous new year. Now for the conclusion of The Case of the Missing Street, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. Outside the door of the blueprint plant, Nick, Patsy, and Scubby hug the floor as bullets smash through the door over their heads. We've got to do something, Nick. Mr. Carter! Mr. Carter, he's in here! That's Fran Harris. Save me, Mr. Carter! Oh, save me! I'm coming in, Miss Harris. Oh, Nick, 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 you can't do it. Stay there, Patsy. Oh, Are no. you crazy? He'll drop you as soon as you go through that door. No, he won't. Here I come, Nixon. Oh, Nick! All right, you can come in too, Patsy. Nixon's dead. Dead? dead. Nixon's dead. What? With a bullet through his heart. There's Fran over against the wall. Well, you got here just in time, Mr. Carter. Nixon was going to kill me. It's no use, Miss Harris. You made a good try, but it didn't work. A good try? How could Nixon be dead with a bullet through his heart when I never fired a shot? Why, I... You were hoping I would shoot, weren't you? Well, he... He killed himself when you said you were coming in. Oh, no, he didn't, Fran. You put a bullet into him and staged the whole act. Too bad I followed up the lead so quickly, isn't it? You were hoping he'd be framed for the murder of Wally White. You mean she... She shot Wally? I told you that murder didn't make sense, Patsy. But it did as soon as I discovered Fran was in the racket with Nixon and was using Doris as a front. That's not true. Then Doris was innocent, Nick? She was, Scubby. When we started investigating the fraud, pulled on Wally White, she got scared and reported it to Fran Harris. And Fran suddenly got a bright idea. What do you mean? You figured that if you killed Wally with Nixon's gun, you could blame the killing on Nixon. And a ballistics test would show that it was Nixon's gun and he'd be executed for murder. Then you could take over the racket. You're a liar. Look, Fran, whether or not we can prove that you killed Wally makes no difference. Because we can prove you killed Nixon just now. You cannot. Oh, yes, we can. You see, Fran, there's no gun within Nixon's reach as he lies there dead. And there are also no powder marks on him to indicate suicide. 
Therefore, the only person who could have killed him is you. Well, you'll never prove anything. Don't you'll... bother to argue, Fran. A criminal court will settle it for you, and settle it good with the evidence I have. From now on, a prison cell is going to be your mailing address. <laughs> There are a couple of points... About I... what, Betsy? Well, you say Fran Harris and Nixon worked this racket together. That's right. Then you mean that whenever Nixon started this racket in a new city, Fran went on ahead and rented an office so he could have a mailing address? Sure. She also hired a girl to work for her as a stenographer. A girl, of course, knew nothing about the racket. She just knew that she worked for Fran. Uh-huh. Yeah, but uh, how did you figure out the tie-up between Fran and Nixon? Why, the minute I heard that wire recording... I knew that they were working together. But she didn't say anything, Nick. She didn't. But her typewriter said plenty. Her typewriter? Mm Mm-hmm. She was typing in code all the time she was talking. In code? That's right. What? She and Nixon had it worked out for emergencies. She was afraid someone might be listening outside, so she tapped out a message on her typewriter in international code. Nick Carter snooping around. Play dumb and go back to the plant. So that's how Nixon knew Scubby was tailing him. Correct. And that's how you got it to lead us to the plant. While you were talking double talk to her, you were also tapping a message to her with your ring. Right again. Oh. All I said was, Nixon calling. Emergency. Come to plant immediately. And when she heard us outside the loft door, she realized she'd been followed. Exactly. And she tried her last desperate trick. She killed Nixon and then fired a few more shots and pretended she was an innocent victim about to be murdered. Yeah, but you didn't fall for it, which finished the case. No, not quite. We've got to go around to the hospital and see Wally White. Oh. Got a present for Jean? No, but I've got a reward for Wally. Huh? The Justice Department was offering $1,000 for information leading to the arrest of Nixon, and I'm seeing to it that Wally collects. Oh, that's swell. He lost money on a missing street, but now he's going to collect on a missing crook. Nick, how about a hint or two on what uh, new post-war old Dutch cleanser has in store for us next week? Well, Bob, the only thing I can tell you is something I'm afraid you won't believe. Well, if you say it, well, I'll believe it. Go on and tell me. Okay, then. It's a story of a man who was shot and killed by a stained glass window. Killed by a... Oh, now, Nick, wait a minute. Oh, well, Bob, you can't say Nick didn't warn you. But that sounds absolutely crazy. Uh, What do you call the story, Nick? I call it The Case of the Devil's Left Eye. Attention, homemakers. Now you don't need a mixing bowl to color margarine. The sensational new Del Rich Easy Color Pack margarine ends mixing bowl mess. With Del Rich, the margarine and color berry are both inside a sealed plastic bag. You simply pinch the berry, then gently knead the bag. And Del Rich quickly blends to a luscious golden color inside the bag. And listen, the delicious country sweet flavor and freshness of Del Rich are sealed in. It's truly America's finest margarine. Ask for the new Dalrich Easy Color Pack margarine tomorrow. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Today's script was written by Alfred Bester. Original music is played by Henry Silverne. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is Bob Martin saying, when minutes count, use new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.